So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some examples of powerful portrait projects. If you look at this project, for example, you can see students produce, well, normally they produce 12 slides because there's an opportunity to edit in black and white or in colour, but some students choose to edit both in black and white and in colour. So if we go through some of these examples, you've got a title page, you've got a project statement explaining what is going to be done for the Powerful Portraits Photography Project. You've got some research into photographs, which people collect from Google. Also, it's a good idea for students to set up a Pinterest account to get some better quality pictures. So there's two slides of initial research work. Then it's a case of choosing the three best pictures from these two slides and writing a detailed analysis of each picture. And you'll be taught how to write about photography work. Then there's an exercise in brainstorming your ideas and creating a Wordle. Next, there is two pages of research on a photographer and there's five choices. Then students either, after they've done the two pages of research, students take their own 24 photographs and produce them in a contact sheet like this, four rows of six. And then finally, they choose two photographs they would like to edit. And then they have a choice of do they want to edit them in black and white, showing a slide full of the editing choices they've made, and then the final image, and then finally there's an evaluation. Some students decide to do colour and edit it in colour and write the final evaluation, and then some students actually do both colour and black and white. If we go back a moment to the initial research, the two slides of initial research, generally looking for examples of powerful portraits, some students actually get some ideas of what to look at because... On SACART, they look at the powerful portraits, photography choices. And we have drinking, we have distorted through liquid, we have striking shadows, and we have emotional faces. If we look at one more example, again, we've got a student who has spent a little bit more time, a bit more interest in first page, title slide, project statement, two pages of initial research, and this is where you can really see that the student has looked at the project choices, striking shadows, distorted through glass, etc. Then we've got his three images which he's described and analysed in detail. We've got his brainstorming. Next we should have two pages of artist research. There's the second one. Next we should have his photo shoot. 24 photographs. Now one of the things that seems a little bit odd with this PowerPoint is he's got these headings of white lettering and a blue box around them and then suddenly when he moves on to his photo shoot he's changed his heading style. So that looks a little bit odd. I don't think the presentation works as well as it might do. After this he's got his two photographs he is intending to edit. Then he's got his editing explanation in black and white and his final image and his editing explanation in color and final image and then his explanation. Of course as a reminder some students will edit in black and white and in color and some students will just choose to edit in either black and white or color. So now that you've seen the layout for the project the next thing to do is to go to SACART and then on SACART, you will see that there is a powerful portraits template for you to download. So if we download that template and we open it up, you basically have your 12 slides of the title page, project statement, initial research one and two, three images to analyze, brainstorming for the Wordle, two pages of research for the photographer, Contact print, two best photos, editing techniques, 
for either black and white and color and final evaluation and two extra slides just in case you decide to do the color and the black and white. So what you need to do now is you need to save that PowerPoint as your own, change the name and form, change the color maybe, change the font, change the position of the titles, look at the examples in the earlier part of this video to give you ideas and then save a copy where you can access it on your documents, on a memory stick and of course you might need to email it back to yourself. You need to decide how are you going to take it back and forth to school to be able to work on it. And then finally, if you look down the side of the presentation, you'll see notes on the types of things you will need to include. But the more detailed notes and instructions are obviously on the seven different lessons on SACART. And finally, for this first lesson and homework, you are doing two things. You are saving the PowerPoint as your own, changing the formatting and the titles and the layout, etc., and the fonts. And you are starting to do these two slides of initial research. So it says, for slide three and four, look at any lesson one guidance. Next, collect 20 to 30 pictures of powerful portraits on a variety of subjects. We've talked about the subjects which are the topics for the Powerful Portraits project and where to find them. Arrange these over two slides, slide one and slide two. And then finally, it says work for excellence, set up a Pinterest account at home to collect even better images, subject, group, the images and annotate look at lesson three and four choices for the subjects and as a quick recap there's the subject choices and lastly we have the examples of a student who has for his initial research grouped the objects into different categories but this student has not annotated any of them so what i mean by annotating is maybe some subheadings for these different groups of photographs which relate to the titles on SACART. So that's lesson one. Set up the PowerPoint and start your initial research.